Need to generate static electricity for the light. This light is too cold. Rubbing the feet on the floor. Urgh. 45th time's a charm. Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can test out or try or use Power BI in like a development environment without using your actual work email address. Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, how do we use Power BI without using our work email? What does that even mean? So as with all things, usually things come up in themes and the last two weeks or so, I've been getting hit up on a couple of items that are similar. Here's one example. I wanna sign up for Power BI. I'm using Power BI in my work environment, but I wanna use another Power BI just to test things out or use it as a sandbox. And I wanna use it with my Gmail account. I'm trying to sign up with Gmail and it doesn't work, right? So that's one good example of this. Another may be, hey, you know, I'm, I wanna try Power BI out, but I don't have a work email at all. And I just wanna use it. I work from home or maybe I'm just, you know, doing this for educational purposes. And again, I have a Gmail or Hotmail or Outlook, and I just wanna sign up for Power BI and try it, but it doesn't work. So I'm gonna show you three different ways that we can do this and then follow it up with a couple of tips or, you know, call outs or just things to be aware of. All right, enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and see how this works. All right, so the first way we can do this is actually just sign up with your work email address. So this is something other than Hotmail, Outlook, Gmail, something like or Yahoo, if you're using Yahoo, well, no judging. So if you were just trying to get Power BI going and you weren't aware of it, just sign up with your work email address and that will work. So a non like public type email address, you can't use any of those, right? So if I tried to sign up with my Gmail account, this would fail. So let's, let's give that a try. Bam, looks like it's a personal email address. Can't use this, gotta use your work address. Part of the thing that confuses folks here is because I can actually share, if I'm signed into Power BI, I can share a report or dashboard with a personal email address, right? So I could, someone with a Gmail account, I could share this out with them. So that actually works, but I can't sign up for Power BI with that personal email address. All right, so how do we get around this? Also of note, I'm in a private browser. I'm incognito window in Chrome or in private if you're using Edge. That way I don't mix this up with my actual work email address, right? So let's go over to, to office.com. The second tip we're gonna go with is to actually sign up for a trial. So an E3 or an E5 trial. The goal here is we need a work email address, right? So how do we get a work email address? We can sign up for a trial. This will create a tenant or organization for us that ends with onmicrosoft.com. So let me go and do that. Let's go to products. We can go down to, uh, for business, we're gonna go to enterprise. And then we're gonna see different items here. So we can see E1, E3, E5. It doesn't matter which ones they have as long as the tenant gets created. In this case, I'm just gonna go with an E5. So let's go down here and we'll say try for free. And with the magic of editing, bam, I've set up my E5 trial. So this user ID is gonna be asaxon at getmesomepowerbi.onmicrosoft.com. So that's my work email address. I now have that. So now I can go sign up for Power BI. So to prove that, let's head back over to our Power BI sign up page. Okay, I got it. We're gonna come back and we're gonna say enter our email address. So let me do that. And we're gonna say sign up. And it should tell us, hey, you've already got an account with us because I've already created that organization by way of that Office 365 trial, the E5 trial, right? So I've already got an account. All right, let's go ahead and sign in. It says we're almost there. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the invites and voila, we are inside of Power BI. And to prove that, let's go ahead and look at our account and we can see I'm signed in as asaxon at getmesomepowerbi.onmicrosoft.com. Bam, just a few clicks, I'm in. And we're all about just teaching you the clicks. All right, so that's one way, right? So I can go sign up for the E5 trial. There are benefits to doing this. So the E5 trial will give me everything that E5 gives me, right? So Office, I get an Outlook actual exchange account that I can go ahead and use with Exchange Online. I, 
it actually comes with Power BI Pro, so I can use that. And, you know, just other benefits. It's a 30 or 60 day trial, so I have access to that, right? So let's go on to the third way. How do I do this? What if I don't want that Office 365 trial because maybe I don't wanna get called or whatever, I don't wanna give that info out. I just want an actual just organization I can just go try just Power BI with, right? I don't want all the extra Office 365. The thing of what I just did with that get me some Power BI.com, that created an Azure Active Directory tenant under the hood, right? So the organization is that Azure Active Directory tenant. So the third way we can go about doing this is just create an Azure Active Directory tenant. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm actually gonna go sign into my Azure portal because I actually have an Azure subscription. So that's with my guy in a cube. And then we're gonna say create a resource. And then we're gonna say Azure Active Directory, right? And we're gonna create this Azure Active Directory. So what do we want the organization name? And then what's that domain? The initial domain when, we, when it creates. You can add other domains later if you want, but this will just be that initial domain. So I'm gonna say, get me some Power BI, and it'll affix on Microsoft.com to the end of it. When I do that, it should come back and tell me, nope, that's already taken, because we used that when we signed up for the Office 365 trial, right? So let me go ahead and put number two next to it. And then that should come back as good to go, right? And you can select your country or region. This is where your tenant will actually be created. And let's go and create. Again, through the magic of editing, it's done. And then we're gonna click here to manage that new directory. Keeping us in the portal, we can go up to the top and we can see that we're in the tenant of the get me some Power BI. So that looks great. So what do we need to do? If we go to users, I've got one and that's my actual ASAX and a guy in a cube.com. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna create a new user. All right, so I'm gonna create an ASAX in user at get me some Power BI 2.onmicrosoft.com. And this user, I'm just making a global admin for just the ease of things. All right, that's created. So let's go back to our incognito window, going back to Power BI, and we're gonna sign in with that user. So I just created an Azure Active Directory directory. So that created the organization. I now have my work email address. Let's go ahead and sign in. And again, we're back into that flow we were in with Office 365. So let's go ahead and sign in, and bam, we're inside of Power BI. And if we go and look, we are in, it's, signed in as ASACs and at get me some power bi 2onmicrosoftcom Oh my gosh. I can just go create an organization. It doesn't have to be my actual, where I work. I can just go do that to kick around the tires. The thing to know with what we just did is I'm a free user, right? It assigned a free license to me. So I don't have pro, I don't have anything. With the E5, Office 365 E5 trial, that actually comes with Power BI Pro for a limited time. So my first tip here is, you know, what if you need to try out Pro or you need to test things with Pro? Because we just signed up, we only have a free license. Again, the E5 subscription on the Office 365 side, the trial, right? So you're not paying any money that comes with Power BI Pro. If we use the Azure Active Directory approach, I just have a free license. I don't have any pros licenses there. You can optionally purchase a Power BI Pro license and just assign that license to the user, or we can just go in and go into manage personal storage and just say try Pro free. At that point, I get a 60 day free Pro trial. I can go and start that trial, right? So that gives you 60, 60 times, right? Or 60 days. If that runs out, I can optionally swap around users. Again, for testing purposes, it's, you know, it's not gonna be a production environment at that point but it's usable. And the last call out I wanna do on this is what about Power BI Premium? I wanna try some of the features of Power BI Premium. There's not really a good way for you to actually trial Power BI Premium. If you go, th if you actually have an account team and you wanna do that, there are some options for you going through your account teams at Microsoft. But from just a general standpoint of here, I'm just kicking the tires from a web page perspective. There's no way for me to do that. So one option you have is I've got that free pro 60 day trial. That gives me all the sharing and collaboration capabilities that premium would then provide. And if I want the actual functionality of premium, so uh, increased schedule refreshes, things of that nature, I could go sign up optionally for an Azure Power BI embedded SKU, which would give me that capacity to actually manage. The catch there is inside of the Azure portal, you have to be signed in with your organizational account. You want that item bound to. So I'd have to be signed in with this account and then create that Azure subscription 
in order to get it to work. So, but those are options that are available for you. Again, to kick the tires, to try things out, to test some things, have like a little playground where you can go and do some items. This is a way you can get up and running. I get this question a lot. Hopefully this helped you out. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. Did it help you out? Does that answer a question? Is this something you're gonna go try? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.